We're all privileged to have with us tonight Professor Wilson, the world-renowned biologist who has often been called the father of biodiversity. Few have highlighted the importance of saving our planet's biodiversity, our precious wildlife and wild lands as eloquently as Professor E.O. Wilson. Please help me in welcoming him to the stage with Elizabeth Colbert. And thank you all for being here. Can you talk a little bit about the, the origins of biodiversity? Biodiversity is short for biological diversity, and it means the totality of all heritable variation um, on Earth, and that includes all of the variety of species and uh, the ecosystems. And that is, there probably was a fairly constant number of species on Earth from one, uh, one million years to the next uh, by the end of the Paleozoic, about 450 million years ago. And, um, then we had the first of the great catastrophes, which may have been giant meteorites, I think most likely was, in which 90% of the species were wiped out. And then it built up again, and when it built up, we were now in the age of dinosaurs, the uh, age of reptiles, the Mesozoic era, and so on. And we've had five of these catastrophes. The last one was 65 million years ago. Of course, uh, what we need to understand is that we are the, um, we're beginning the sixth great one, that the species are disappearing now beginning. It's the beginning of the sixth great extinction spasm, and uh, we are responsible, and it's our, uh, we are doing it, and we need to uh, take responsibility for bringing it to a halt. It's not a good thing to wipe out most of the rest of life on the planet. What, what is the biggest uh, threat to biodiversity today? There are, there are so many. Uh, if you had to rank them, what, what would be on the top of the list? Of what, again? The biggest threats to, to biodiversity. Oh, threats to biodiversity, that's easy. Oh, okay. Uh, Good. And, uh, yes, that one. Uh, they, <laughs> because what I can do is to offer you a, um, an easy way to remember it with a, with a mnemonic device, uh, an acronym. It's HIPPO. Uh, like the animal hippo. And if you take the letters for a force of extinction, all of them man-induced or, or, uh, or exacerbated, uh, and go from H to the O, then you're going down the list of the, in order of uh, their, uh, uh, in other words, H is the most uh, important. Uh, H is for habitat destruction. And that, into that we can put climate change. The I in hippo stands for invasive species, you know, like the aforementioned fire ant. First P is for pollution, and the second P is where we throw it in, that's overpopulation. O is for overharvesting, and I think most of you would be familiar with the um, evidences of overharvesting in the decline of uh, marine catches. So there you go. Hippo uh, each one needs to be addressed uh, expertly with the right knowledge and in its own right, but they all do tie, tie together uh, in um, the way they've been uh, imposed on, on, the, on the, the world's biosphere. Yeah, I heard that loud and clear. That's really, that's very good. Um, at every level, uh, the argument uh, for saving every species we can is irrefutable. First of all, uh, I start at the moral level. That's, uh, we need to uh, understand that when you've seen one bug, you haven't seen them all. What you're looking at, uh, <laughs> And each species is a masterpiece of evolution. The average species lives, or has before humanity came along, for one million years, that's its average longevity, very roughly, before it finally goes extinct and is replaced by other similar species. And they then get to multiply and live for a period of time. 
And in that period of time, the species becomes exquisitely adapted to its particular environment. And that means that it's part of that environment, which if removed, is going to have an effect. It's been estimated that when one species of tree is extinguished, and a large species of trees around the world are right on the edge, down to, say, even a single specimen left, when a species of tree is extinguished, at least 20 species, uh, an average of 20 species of insects, for example, go extinct with it. It has that kind of cascading effect. You, you've written that our environmental problems um, spring, at, you know, at least in part from our own evolutionary history, that we evolved to think in terms of uh, very short time frames and very small kinship groups. And now, suddenly, basically over a generation, uh, we need to figure out how to think uh, in very long time frames yeah. of a whole global society. Um, how, how are we going to go about uh, doing that? Those natural systems are what sustain us. Uh, if you took away even a little piece of that, if you took away, for example, the insects, the bugs, just remove them. And there are probably at least a few people, not anybody here, but out on the streets there that would put a kid, yeah, I'd like that. <laughs> um, the, uh, literally, most of the living world would, uh, would collapse, at least on the land, within five or 10 years, and humanity uh, would scarcely be able to hold on as a species uh, by uh, using uh, fisheries and by uh, their, their basic grains, just growing nothing but grains, and it would be an absolute catastrophe. Uh, if we need to get across our dependency on the natural world in, in vivid, accurate but vivid terms. But that's just a start. Uh, what, what is there that gives you um, any hope that humans uh, have the capacity to fundamentally you know, alter this course that we're on towards a, towards a sixth um, mass extinction that you mentioned before? Right. What we need is hope. I don't want to sound like uh, one of our presidential contenders, but uh, maybe I should sound like it. But at any rate, the point is that um, the um, Americans have a genius for adaptation. We're about at that stage ready for another great leap forward, and America needs to be uh, told that or understand that. We, need, uh, we Americans need to understand that. And we should see the enormous opportunity that we have right now, a crisis of this sort, environment, losing, the, the danger of losing leadership in technology and productive capacity uh, compared to other countries ought to be something that we rise to and that we can rise to, uh, we can achieve. And, and we've done it before and, and doggone it, we're the best in the world at it, so let's do it. That's, that's basically what I see, how I see we would do it. Thank you. 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 Thank you.